Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the difference between negative and positive work, and we're going to talk about negative positive work for horizontal motion. Okay, in the next video, we'll talk about negative and positive work, the difference between those two things for vertical motion, but let's talk about today horizontal motion. Okay, negative and positive work. Now, what is work? Here is the equation we use for work. Work is force times distance times the cosine of theta. So we often say that work is a force that is applied over distance. But what is the cosine of theta? Or what is theta? Well, theta is the thing we're really going to focus on in this video because theta is the angle between the displacement and the force for which we're trying to figure out how much work it's doing. Okay, that makes sense. And it's so important I even put this little yellow box around it. Theta is the angle between the displacement and the force. Okay, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. I'm just going to go through the kind of definitions of negative and positive work. Positive work occurs when a force acts in the same direction as the displacement. So if there's an object that's moving to the right, there's a force that's pulling it or pushing it to the right, then that force is probably doing positive work. And the most kind, common kind of force that does positive work is an applied force. Okay, negative work. Negative work is done by a force that acts in the direction opposite of the displacement. Now, the most common force that acts in the opposite direction is friction. So friction is the most common kind of force I think you can think of as just doing negative work. Now, negative work, I want to just point out, does not mean it's doing less than zero work. I think of negative work as work that's being kind of taken out, a force that's taking work or energy out of the system. And positive work is a force that's putting work in or putting energy into the system. Okay, it's not less than zero negative work. It just means that the force is acting in the opposite direction. All right, now let's go through an example for each of these. Positive work. We have a force that's acting to the right. Let's just say it's 50 newtons. The object is also moving to the right. Let's just say it's 10 meters. We want to figure out how much work is that force doing? How much work is the applied force doing? Well, we know it's Fd cosine theta. Well, we gave, we're given F, we're given D, so that's pretty easy. But what is theta in this case? Now, you can see that it's important to notice that this force and this force, excuse me, this displacement and this force are parallel to each other and they're pointing in the same direction. They're going in the same direction. That means that the angle <clears throat> between those two lines, the angle between the force and the distance, or theta in this case is zero degrees. Now it's not just zero degree, not just zero degrees, it's actually the cosine of zero degrees, and the cosine of zero is plus one. So how much work is the applied force doing? Well, it's just 50 times 10 times plus one, or 50 times 10 times one. And that means in this case, when you have a 50 Newton force, the object is moving 10 meters to the right, that means the applied force is doing plus 500 joules of work. Okay, well, let's look at a case for negative work. Here we have an object. Let's just say it's moving to the right. Now there's a force, most likely a friction force, moving to the left. Now there could also be an applied force to the right in this case, but we want to focus on the friction force and the negative work. Well, what is the, well, if we want to calculate the work, it's pretty easy. We're given the force, we're given the distance again, but what is theta in this case? In this case, we have the displacement is to the right, the force is to the left, Theta is the angle between the displacement and the force. And this angle in here, you should notice, is 180 degrees. So that means that cosine, that's excuse me, that means that theta is 180 degrees. Well, we need the cosine of 180 degrees. Now, maybe you remember from your cosine curve, you have your calculator there, you could look it up. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. Remember the cosine of zero, if you remember your cosine curve, is plus one, and then it dips down and the cosine of 180 is negative one. So how do we get negative work? Well, we get negative work because it's 50 times 10 times minus one. That means that the friction force in this case is doing minus 500 joules of work. And I think of it once again as if it's plus, that this force is putting energy in. If it's negative, then this force is taking energy out. Okay, now I wanna go over one more quick example to show you what I mean by negative and positive and even zero work forces that don't do any work. Okay, here we have an object, any object. The object is moving to the right, 15 meters. We have four forces, applied, normal, friction, and gravitational. We want to figure out 
how much work each of the individual forces is doing. How much work does each force do on the object? And because the forces are balanced, that means the object is moving at a constant velocity. So constant velocity, balance forces, balance forces, constant velocity. Okay, you can see it's 50, this, excuse me, 70 and 70. Those are opposite, um, 50 up and 50 down. The net force is zero. Okay, the net force on that object is zero. All right, now let's figure out using our equation the work that each force does. Well, the applied force, 70 times 15, the force times the distance times the angle between them. Now we just said that this is the force, this is the displacement, they're in the same direction and they're parallel to each other. So the cosine of zero, the theta is zero, and that means we have the cosine of zero. We remember from the previous example that the cosine of zero degrees is plus one. So it's 70 times 15 times plus one, which means we get a plus, and I just put the plus there for emphasis, 1,050 joules. So the applied force is doing 1,050 joules of work. But what about the normal force? The normal force is up. Now what is the angle? Let's just think ahead of time. What's the angle between the displacement and the normal force. Well, that angle is 90 degrees. That's a right angle. And what is the co? That means theta is 90 degrees. Or what's the cosine of 90 degrees? Okay, that's important. So we have 50 is the force. The object is moving 15. The cosine of 90 degrees, because that's the angle between the displacement and the force. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees. That's right. You guessed it. It's a zero. That means that the normal force is doing zero joules of work on the object. Now, I'm not saying there is no force or the force went away or something like that. It just means that the normal force is doing no work on the object when the object moves to the right 15 meters. No component of that force is in the direction of the motion. Okay. Now, what about the friction force? Okay, what's the angle between the displacement and the friction force? Well, this angle, this displacement points to the right, the friction force to the left, that angle is 180 degrees, so it's 70 times 15 times 180. Well, what do we say previously? The cosine of 180 is minus one. So it is doing work, but it's doing negative work. It's taking energy out of the system. Okay, now the last one is gra gravitational force. Now, I went around like this. This is 90, 180, 270. You could just as well say this is 90. You get the same answer. But what's the cosine of 270? If you have your cosine curve, you have your calculator there. What's the cosine of 270? Two cosine of 270 is zero. So once again, it's 50 times 15 times zero. So that force, the gravitational force, is doing zero joules of work. Okay, now I just want to point out that these are zero, and once again, it doesn't mean there is no force, it just means that that force is doing no work on the object when the object moves to the right. If the object was moving down, like falling down, then gravity would be doing work, but in this case, it's not doing work, but it's moving to the right, and the angle is 270, and the cosine is 270 is zero. Okay, now, we said this constant velocity, we said the net force on, on this object is zero. That means if we, figure, if we add all these up, we can get the net work. Well, you should notice that the net work is zero and that all fits together because the net force is zero, the constant velocity balance forces, the net work is zero, the object is not speeding up or slowing down. Okay, so there you go. That's the difference between positive and negative work. I hope you found that helpful. If you click here on the link right here, there's a video I made for the difference between negative and positive work for vertical motion. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Keep your cosines and your angles straight, and I think you can figure that out. It's not that complicated. If you enjoyed that, if you found it helpful, leave me a comment in the comment section below or a thumbs up, and we'll see you, of course, in the next video. Thank you very much.